What's up everyone? Welcome back. I'm Mike Seitz and in today's video, I'm going to show you all of the features, settings and flight modes on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I'm going to explain everything in detail and I'll be using the RC2 remote control, drone settings, safety features, camera modes, everything you need to know and you get to see it all right here on this channel. Let's go. The DJI Mini 4 Pro and the RC2 remote control have so many features, settings and modes and you probably know a few of them if not all but the problem is that they've never been fully explained in detail until now. So let me give you a brief overview of the features before I dive in. The DJI Mini 4 Pro is DJI's most advanced mini drone to date under 249 grams. It features a camera system with a 1 over 1.3 3 inch sensor. Now you hear that all the time, but are you aware that it's not actually a one inch sensor? A standard SD card, if you measure it diagonally, is a little over one inch. And by comparison, a micro SD card is much smaller and they will say one over 1.3 inch to make it seem bigger. But you and I both know there's only one sensor size that will fit into that little camera gimbal. And that is the one that measures 0.77 inches. And it will also support 4K at 100 frames per second. You can see the results of a slow motion video that I took of a waterfall while flying backwards. And I want you to know that I purposely adjusted these settings so that my ISO would be set manually and my shutter speed was left on auto. And you notice that the video is somewhat dark, right? Well, let me show you why. Here's the simultaneous screen recording from my RC2 remote control. Notice when I change the ISO manually that the shutter speed will change automatically. It's trying to maintain a consistent image and no matter what you do with the ISO manually, the automatic settings of the shutter speed will continuously try to compensate by adjusting the value so the image will remain the same. The valuable information that I just gave you means that all settings need to be set to manual so that way you have full control. And let me give you a bonus tip also, whenever you're shooting in slow motion, that means that you're capturing more frames per second. And more frames per second means that there's less light being captured on each frame. And less light being captured on each frame means that the overall video image will be darker. So you have to adjust your ISO and your shutter speed accordingly in manual mode. This will allow you to have the best exposure value for your video. Now with the drone and the RC2 remote controller turned on, touch the little three dots on the top right. This will take you into your menu system where you should tap on safety and scroll all the way to the very bottom and look for advanced safety settings. And on the next sub menu, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom again and look for vision positioning and obstacle sensing. Now initially I thought that this setting was only for the bottom sensor, but no, this setting will disable all of the obstacle avoidance sensors. And this is the reason why DJI put this message on screen so that way you know that you need to exercise caution if you disable this in your settings. And as you can see, I just turned mine off. So let me give you a live demonstration of what happened in live flight. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is to confirm that it's not only just a downward facing sensor that's disabled, but it's also all of the other sensors. Let me check the back and see if there's anything on it. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> yep, it really did. And now you know why DJI put that cautionary message up. So what am I gonna do right now? I'm gonna turn that feature back on. And I also realized that it was difficult to land the drone smoothly and safely with that feature disabled. And I've just turned it off again because I need to have confirmation of certain settings that I forgot to mention. If I go all the way back up to safety and I scroll all the way to the 
top and look for obstacle avoidance action. You can see it's allowing me to either bypass or break, but it is not turning off this feature by default, such as it would if I were, for example, in sport mode. These options would simply not be available, but they are when vision positioning and obstacle sensing is disabled. So again, I recommend that for this setting that you have this setting enabled, double check it and make sure that this setting is enabled at all times. Now, how about a setting that allows you to modify the speed of your drone? And I'm referring to cine mode, normal mode, and sport mode, all three independent modes that have separate speed settings. And there's also a settings to adjust the speed and the smoothness of your camera gimbal. You see, whenever it is that you're flying a drone and you're capturing video, the most important thing is that the movement of the drone is smooth and undetectable. Notice how I have the drone descending and the gimbal is tilting smooth smoothly down at 10 degrees per second. This is what you're looking for. So let me show you how to set this up. Tap the three dots on the top right again, and in the menu system, go to control. Remember that the Mini 4 Pro needs to be turned on in order for you to be able to see the menu settings. Scroll down and tap on Gain and Expo Tuning. This is where you'll be able to now have the independent settings for your speed in regard to Cine Mode, Normal Mode, and Sport Mode. And remember, they're all independent settings. And what you can do here is to modify the speed of the aircraft. Horizontal speed, ascent speed, descent speed, angular velocity, yaw smoothness. And if you keep going, you'll see that there is the gimbal tilt speed and also tilt smoothness. Notice how I can adjust the speed that the gimbal will tilt by degrees per second. So if I set the angle or the tilt to nine degrees per second, that means that the gimbal is going to be moving much slower than if I were to set it at 100 degrees per second. You see how I'm breaking this down where no one else would explain it? And if you really, really wanted the speed of the tilt to go as slow as possible, well, you'd be able to set it to one degree per second. <laughs> but at that rate, you'd probably have to change your battery out every Every time you made a gimbal movement. I usually keep mine at about seven or eight degrees so that way I can maintain a cinematic movement. And just below this is tilt smoothness and setting this to the highest value will give you the most smooth rotation. Now let me explain what tilt smoothness is by giving you a very cool analogy. Suppose you're in a canoe and you're paddling over the water and you're stabbing at the water instead of giving nice smooth strokes so that way the canoe moves evenly and smoothly. A camera gimbal is very similar because when it begins to move and ends the movement, it's either going to do this abruptly or it's going to do it very smoothly. This is not about the speed or the angle of degree. This is about when the gimbal starts moving and when it stops. So now let me show you how to select your various camera modes and also choose the appropriate settings for each mode. And there's a little icon that I'm pointing to. If you touch on that, it will take you into your camera options. Now the one on the top left allows you to take single shot photos. And just below that is your AEB auto exposure bracketing. And what it does is take multiple shots of the same image. And each one of the shots has a different exposure value. For example, one's normal, one's overexposed, once underexposed and then you blend them all together in Photoshop or Lightroom to create a super high dynamic range image that gives you the most amount of detail. It's something that you could not create with just one single shot. Now burst is when you want to capture something that's moving very fast such as a bird or a car and you can capture three or five shots in rapid sequence and just so you know all of the images will have the same exposure values. Now just below that is the timer or should I say the self timer. This is when you want to delay the shutter for a certain amount of time. And you can see five seconds, seven seconds, 10 seconds, but this will go all the way up to 60 seconds. And that means that you could put the RC remote down, take a bite of a donut, sip a cup of coffee, wipe your face, walk to the front of the drone, and it will take a photo of you 60 seconds later. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? Tap on single again and then tap on the information on the bottom to open another menu. Here is where you now have control over the format, aspect ratio, and resolution. And you notice at the very top that the white balance can be adjusted so that way any object in the photo that is supposed to be white can be brought back to the correct perspective color. Now I'm going to pause the video here just for a moment because I want to point something out to you that I don't think has ever been mentioned on any other YouTube video. And this is regarding 
regarding the DJI Mini 4 Pro. You see, color temperature in photography is measured in Kelvin, and that's why you see the K at the end of the number value at the top under white balance. And that's relatively understandable. And you should also understand that the highest value, which is 10,000 K, means that the color temperature will be cooler. And the lowest value, which is 1,000 Kelvin, means that the color temperature will be extremely warm. So based on the information that I just provided to you, what is it that you see that stands out that doesn't seem normal? And I think you all just became self-aware, exactly. The white balance value that is being indicated in my settings should mean that 2000 Kelvin would make the image much warmer. But yet the image that you're seeing coming from the drone camera looks as though everything is blue and that it's much colder. So why does the image look all blue at 2000 Kelvin? And I'm going to explain this to clear up a lot of confusion and even some professional photographers would be confused. You see, in the event that you're flying your drone outdoors and the color temperature outside is 2000 Kelvin, then that number value should be the same value that's set on your white balance so the drone knows to add more blue to the warm colors of the outdoor environment. And this can be extremely confusing, especially for a five-year-old. And now you see why iPhones don't have manual white balance control. And as you can see, I have resumed the video, but just for the purpose of complete clarification, I'm going to assume that the color temperature outside right now is 5,600 Kelvin. And I have the option to use a slider bar or I can use the plus or minus buttons. And do you notice how the image appears to be much more natural or what's referred to in photography as neutral? Now in regard to the format, or should I say file type, same thing, you have three. JPEG is a small compressed file for social media, for example. A raw file, which is uncompressed, higher bit quality, a larger file, which is what most professionals will be using. And if you're working on social media and professional use well you can output both JPEG and RAW at the same time really powerful features for a little sub mini drone don't you think the next one down is the aspect ratio setting now this is the width and the height of your image or your video and you see how I just selected 4 by 3 and the image just shrunk on my RC2 controller the first number is always the width and the next number is always the height and using 4 by 3 for photo means that you're utilizing the full width and height of the camera sensor. Now regarding the resolution, you can either shoot at 12 megapix or you can shoot at 48 megapix. And I know you have a question, right? Hey Mike, what's the difference? Well, basically there is no difference, but there is a difference. You see that little tiny camera sensor has 48 million little pixels. Each one of these little squares that you're looking at is a pixel. And this quad bayer sensor that's inside of the Mini 4 Pro can take four of those pixels and turn them into one giant pixel. So get your calculator out and divide 48 million by four. And what do you get? You get 12 million, 12 megapixels, and the sensors are bigger. And I know your next question, why are they doing this? Well, here is the fiesta resistance of the explanation. It's because of lighting. Everything in video and photography has to do with lighting. Lighting is the most important thing. And when you have a sensor that is very big, it's able to capture a lot more light. So if you have a very dim, low light environment and you want to capture video, all you have to do is to switch your camera over to 12 megapixels so it can be able to see in the dark much better than it would be if you were at 48 megapixels. The 48 megapixel setting is utilized when you have sufficient lighting and you want to capture as much detail and quality in the photo as possible. And lastly, you can decide where all of these images will be saved to either on the SD card that's inserted into the drone or the drone has two gigabytes of internal storage. You can store it there also, but I would prefer to do it on the card. You see, I have a 512 gigabyte SD card installed in my DJI Mini 4 Pro. So now that you're so well versed in photo modes, let's discuss video modes for resolution, frames per second, and format. Tap on the little icon again and switch over to video. And remember, you also want to tap on the information below to pull up your mode menu. Now this seems very familiar, doesn't it? But this is only for video. And keep in mind that your photo settings that you just stored are completely separate from this. Now the Mini 4 Pro offers two types of video resolutions, 1080p and 4K. 
and you can see as I'm speaking I'm running through the frame rates per second for 1080p which goes up to 60 frames per second now if I switch over to 4k you'll see I'll run through the frame rates at 24 frames per second 25 frames per second 30 frames per second, 48 frames per second, 50 frames per second, and lastly, 60 frames per second. And a common question here is, why would I shoot in 30 frames per second at 4K when I can shoot in 60 frames per second? Well, a 30 frame per second video means that the file size will be smaller. But if you shot the video in 4K 60 frames per second, that means you have an option of being able to slow it down slightly and it will appear to be much smaller smoother. The file size will be bigger and you have more room to work with in regard to how the video looks. Now moving down to the color profile, you see I was in normal, now I'm in HLG and I'm switching over to D-Log M which is a flat color profile, a logarithmic profile as they call it, and it's used whenever you're recording video and you want to preserve the maximum amount of dynamic range, especially when you're talking about details in highlights and shadows. I'm sure that you already noticed how gray the image looks on my RC2 controller, but don't worry, you'll be amazed at how much details and color that you can pull out of this log profile. And later I will create a video specifically on this color grading topic. Now tap anywhere on the screen and go back to that icon to pull up your menu again and this time switch over to night mode. And this is an intelligent video setting that uses a higher value ISO and applies noise reduction. Tap on 4K30 at the bottom to pull up the frame rates per second. And you can see that for both 1080p and for 4K that there are only three choices, 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. Now it's very important to understand that night mode only works in normal mode. It will not work in HGL or D-Log M. So you'll need to make sure that you are in the normal color profile before you switch over to night mode. And last but not least is slow motion, which we covered earlier. The most important thing here is that you need to switch over to manual mode so you can adjust your settings accordingly in regard to the ISO and the shutter speed. If I'm utilizing the auto set settings, then that may be sufficient for certain lighting conditions, but in other lighting conditions, you may need to switch over to manual settings so you can adjust accordingly to get the best picture possible in slow motion. And in regard to frames per second, 1080p will give you 100 frames per second and 200 frames per second, but 4K, you can only shoot in 100 frames per second. That's it. And I hope this video was helpful. I try to give you detailed explanations because normally these things are just not explained to you, I will be having more of these videos, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Keep climbing those mountains. Remember, everything is a learning process. Until then, I will see you all on the next video.